After years of anticipation, SpaceX launched the first test flight of the full-scale Starship rocket on Thursday from South Texas, and it marked one of the biggest moments in the program's history. However, the world's largest, most powerful rocket also caused some serious mayhem during the first launch. The launch pad has been completely deformed, and due to that situation, SpaceX's plan to conduct three Starship flights per day to colonize Mars is currently not feasible. As a result, SpaceX Stage Zero plans have completely changed. Let's find out everything about it in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Before we start, if you're new, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon, that way you're updated on our latest content. Let's get started. SpaceX's massive, fully integrated Starship launch vehicle lifted off from SpaceX's Starbase test facility in Boca Chica, Texas, April 20th. At least three of the booster's 33 Raptor 2 engines failed to ignite at liftoff, but with each of the others producing 500,000 pounds of thrust, the remaining 30 engines managed to produce a hideous but record-breaking amount of lifting power. By my estimate, that's 15 million pounds of force, but we await the SpaceX official confirmation. By comparison, NASA's Space Launch System, the SLS rocket, blasted off in November 2022 with 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust. Starship then flew for just over four minutes on its first orbital test flight, complete with some somersaults, before automated systems initiated a destructive abort procedure and caused the rocket to explode. Sadly, the success of Starship even clearing its launch tower indicates significant headway for SpaceX, which is known for sometimes destroying vehicle prototypes in the name of progress. In SpaceX's infancy, CEO Elon Musk could have been seen strolling through fields of fallen rocket debris, but now there's no chance anyone will be traversing the scope of what Starship left behind, at least without a helicopter. Dust and debris from the launch went flying, sometimes for miles, creating concerns for some local residents. It's without a doubt that Stage Zero received a heavy amount of damage. As shown in a leaked image, the area under the OLM is now a big crater. Part of the OLM structure is gone, leaving only the rebar to stand. The area around the OLM is just dirt where concrete once stood. The tank farm also received a heavy amount of damage. A concrete slab was broken off and thrown from underneath the OLM as laying on top of the helium tanks. The protective shells for the propellant tanks also heavily dented. The OLM piping received exterior damage from pressure waves, concrete, and heat blast. And additionally, some of the shieldings on the stairs and other parts are no longer in place. Some of these pieces, including a door or hatch pictured in the gallery below, were blown hundreds of meters out into the sand dunes. To close out the view into the damage caused by the Starship inaugural launch, the area surrounding the pad was beaten up badly as well. The area outside the SpaceX property, the dunes, is covered in rocks and what looks to be a Martian landscape. Large chunks of concrete litter the ground and have created large craters. The Gulf of Mexico also receiving some concrete in a video posted by SpaceX. The Gulf appears to showcase a lot of splashes as concrete is hurled hundreds of meters when the liftoff finally occurred. The fishies definitely thought the world was ending, but thankfully SpaceX's Starhopper, a test vehicle used in the development of Starship, it appears to have survived the launch with only its outer shell removed. Retired Starhopper continues to stand right next to the launch pad. After all, Elon Musk admitted SpaceX miscalculated the impact of Starship launch on the pad concrete. Musk said, three months ago, we started building a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount, wasn't ready in time, and we wrongly thought, based on static fire data, the Fondag would make it through one launch. Well, then Musk also added the flames of the Raptor engine shattered the concrete instead of eroding it, insinuating that perhaps SpaceX had expected the latter to occur. Yep, several months later, water deluge system components were loaded on a barge from Cape Canaveral where SpaceX scrapped plans for a launch site and sent it to the site in Starbase, Texas. Those components have been prepared for installation, but not yet installed, with the focus being on getting to a first launch instead. At around the same time, SpaceX began working on a long-term replacement for the concrete pad, a water-cooled steel pad. Steel has been used successfully in the past to wick heat away from rocket exhaust, 
and using water cooling means the steel doesn't need to be nearly as thick to absorb the heat. Steel components labeled flame diverter have been spotted arriving to Starbase in the past month. Based on how much the concrete eroded during the 31 engine test at half throttle, representing a little over half the expected thrust during liftoff, SpaceX was fairly confident the Fondag concrete would be good enough for a single launch, though it would be significantly damaged. The way timelines worked out, the rocket was ready before the water deluge system or steel diverter system, so SpaceX went right ahead with the launch expecting to be adding in new mitigations after it. The Fondag did not hold up and massive damage was done to the concrete and underlying soil during launch, emphasizing the need for the mitigations. This was unexpected only in severity. As soon as the Fondag fell, the underlying soil and surrounding regular concrete stood no chance, as the rocket exhaust could easily build pressure under the concrete slabs and inside the soil, throwing large pieces of debris thousands of feet and loose sand up in the air to be carried into the wind. SpaceX will now need to carefully inspect the launch mount for irreparable structural damage to the foundation and all surrounding infrastructure for debris inflicted damage, as well as cleaning up the massive debris field. If the launch mount can be repaired, they'll either install the systems already in development, or perhaps they may need to develop even more significant modifications. Per one NASA scientist, the water-cooled steel plate should be more than sufficient at absorbing the heat so the need for a full flame diverter depends on if the acoustic energy reflecting off the ground will be a problem or not, which is what a water deluge system is designed to mitigate. SpaceX have been hoping to launch again in one to two months. Musk had said that, but that will depend on how widespread the damage is and how quickly SpaceX can repair it. Regardless, the damage serves as a valuable lesson for SpaceX to construct more durable launch pads in the future, especially with their launch pads in Florida. NASA's concern that the launch of SpaceX's Starship rocket in Florida could damage the Space Agency's launch infrastructure. The agency wants to ensure the plan for the Starship rocket launch will not put important property at risk. It may take us a few kicks of the can before we reach orbit, and then beyond reaching orbit, we've got to bring the booster back and land, Musk even said. We've got to bring the ship back and land, and in order for the reusability to be rapid, it's got to land where it took off, because transporting this gigantic beast around is extremely difficult. Musk said he thinks SpaceX can have the Super Heavy and Starship rockets recoverable and rapidly reusable within two to three years. The company wants to eventually retire the workhorse Falcon rocket family and Dragon spacecraft in favor of Super Heavy and Starship, although Falcon and Dragon are expected to remain in service launching crews and cargo to the space station until the late 2020s. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comments section below because your support motivates us to create more quality videos. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.